What's up, everybody? Mr. Porkchop back here with another video. Um, before we get into today's video, I just want to thank you guys all for uh, subscribing and for watching my videos. Um, I'm still working toward that thousand subscriber mark, so if you're not subscribed and this is the first time uh, seeing my video, I'd really appreciate you guys subscribing and liking the video. Um, this video is going to be basically on an error that I found uh, working on one of my projects, and uh, I just I like doing videos on different errors I find because I know like when I get these errors if the, the first thing I try to do is YouTube a video and find an answer so um, I like to make new videos on any errors that I find so that is what I did for this one and I hope you guys enjoy it let me know in the comment section if you do I just finished up my project for my data structures and algorithms 2 class this is actually that project um, and I figured before I jump into my next class, I'll try to make a video for you guys and kind of show you some of the things I learned um, in this project as far as the CSV files go and some of the errors I ran into. This is more going to be like a troubleshooting one. I'm not going to go through all the different code and show you how I did this project just because I don't want other students to just copy what I did. Um, but if you're planning on doing any kind of projects uh, where you have to pull in data from CSV files, and you have to have actual, um, you know, paths to your different files, um, and you're trying to set up, um, you're trying to set up different files inside your program, and you're having issues, then this is going to be a great video for you guys. I'll show you basically all the issues that I found and how to correct them. Um, so one of the main issues that I have with CSV, uh, CSV files or any type of text file that you're trying to use in your program is when you go to run it, you're going to get this, you know, file not found error, error two, no such file or directory. And this can be a very frustrating, um, <laughs> a very frustrating error to get, especially when you're looking at your project and you're like, hello, the, the file is right here. I can clearly see that it's in my directory. It's in the correct file. I know it's there. Um, you're even showing like for, for this one, instead of just having the actual um, file name, actually I'm going up one directory um, from my main class so this is where it's running it's going outside my main and it's going up one directory to my CSV files folder and I have that there so there should be no reason why this isn't working now a lot of videos that you see they may just tell you well put the absolute path in there and you can do that to get the absolute path of your file I usually just right click on it and go to show and explorer and then you can go up here basically and just copy address as a text and then instead of having this you can just paste all this in here um, these slashes you got to kind of change around um, for some reason they're not going to really like those ones I don't know if you have to do it the whole way down or it's just the first one um, but for some reason I usually just always end up changing these around um, so you can do that. Just keep in mind that what what I just did, where I copied that, um, see files. Oops, I forgot one here. All right. So just keep in mind, I just pasted basically this. You're still gonna have to add in the actual text file name after um, after copying it from Explorer. So basically, if you copy it from here, it's not gonna have the actual text file name. It's just gonna give you all of this. Um, so paste that in there, and then write in the actual file name at the end. That's called the absolute file path name. And this lets your, this will let basically IntelliJ know when it goes to find this file exactly where it is. And you won't get this error. So if I run it again, you'll see I'm getting this error on line 16. And it's because of this um, CSV file hub address, which is the one right here. So if I run it again, you'll see it's going to get the error on the next one. So this one's going to work. So you run it, now it's on basically it's going to line six and it's just showing the, the next csv file so this distance file i'm getting the same error but this one i'm not getting the error anymore so you can do it that way and a lot of times when you look on view uh, videos on youtube like that's what you're going to see the reason i don't like doing it like this is because if you're submitting a project especially for a class they're not going to have your project saved on your your c or your c drive users your your actual username none of that is going to be the same so when they go to run it and they do go to evaluate your project they're not going to be able to run it 
they're going to get the same error and they're going to be like, I'm sorry, your program doesn't work and they're going to kick it back, which is so frustrating. And the way basically to fix this issue without doing the absolute file path, which you shouldn't have to do, is I'm going to go ahead and delete this again. We'll put it back to the way it was. Um, you're going to want to go up into your configuration um, settings over here, like edit configurations. So click on edit configurations. And what you're going to want to change basically is your working directory. So for me right now, what the working directory is, is the top file. This is the folder that my project is saved in. And it would make sense to make this your working directory. However, what you really want to do is go down farther into your actual program. So I usually go on this file here. And again, just kind of, you can change it to get to the file that you need it to be at for it to work, depending on how many layers um, your project has. But, uh, but for mine, I just need to go down one folder to this folder here, click OK, click Apply. And now this will now it'll accept this without any issues. I won't need the whole um, the whole file path. So you can see now it runs. There's no errors at all, and all my CSV files were able to be um, processed the way that they should be. So yeah, once you change your actual working directory, you should be able to get it to work. However, like I said in this one, I have it going up one directory from my main class. Um, if I just were to put in basically just a file name and I run it, uh, it's still going to give me that, that same error because it's only going to be searching pretty much like it's not going to know where to go, where to find it. Basically, if this is my working directory, then it's only going to kind of see these files here, which are folders. So you kind of have to tell it, you know, which folder to go into to find what you want it to find, um, which is why I have this, um, csv underscore files slash and then the file name so that way it knows all right inside my working directory i'm going into this folder and then i'm going to find this file and that works just fine so i just wanted to clarify that to make sure that uh, you guys understood why that was there so now if i run it obviously everything works uh so yeah that is that is pretty much it um as far as uh, CSV errors go. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other issues I had. Um, the only other ones are like SDK errors. Uh, and again, those are kind of just in your configurations. Sometimes if you don't have the right SDK set up, um, it'll kind of give you an issue. So I just like apply that, close. If you're trying to run your project and this pops up and it just says, you know, specify Python SDK, I just want you to come in here and do it. Sometimes um, I know I got this error when I was pulling my project back and forth off of GitHub. If I wanted to like delete my project and just kind of like start over and pull what I had on GitHub, um, it kind of defaulted to this, or it would, you know, be de it would default to this, and then for some reason um, it would say that like this this um, project didn't have the SDK. Because I think it's not, I don't have the SDK like saved inside this project. So again, that one's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Um, just click in here and get the SDK that you need. And then it should run fine. That's pretty much all I got for this one. Uh, again, very short video. Um, let me know what you guys uh, want to see in Python though. I can create, um, I can pretty much make any kind of videos you guys want on Python now. I'm getting, I'm getting a little better with it, especially after this project. Um, I was able to create a bunch of different classes and a lot with uh, basically like hash tables in this one. And my nearest neighbor algorithm is the, the algorithm I use to basically deliver all my packages, which is what this project was. It was just basically a package delivery um, project. So... They kind of wanted you to go through and create an algorithm that would deliver a bunch of packages. And I use the nearest neighbor algorithm, which basically just uh, delivers one package and then calculates the distance to deliver all the other packages and takes the one with the shortest distance and then delivers that one next and just keeps going like that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got, I think. All right, guys, that's it for this video. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, also, leave me comments. I try to get back to everybody that leaves me comments, um, whether they're questions or you just want to say what's up or if this video helped you and you just want to let me know. I appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you all in the next one.